Thank you so much. <clears throat> and hearty congratulations to all the prize winners. Um, amazing, because we are from Bombay, and we only hear your names and read about you in all the India Todays that we keep reading. So first of all, for me, it is such a pleasure to meet all of you faculty members here and deans uh, of these amazing colleges that, that we've only been hearing about and now to see you. So heartiest congratulations to all of you. It's indeed a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, I must say, uh, I'm going to begin, I know my topic is NEP and, uh, uh, you know, the uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, I think something which is very dear to many of you, but I'm going to begin with a personal note. Um, taking you back to the year 2000, when I became the principal of Mumbai's prestigious HR College of Commerce, and economics. And it was a great opportunity. And you know, to think that there I was in the middle of all the, the, the campus in the middle of all the corporates in the city of Mumbai, a commerce college, a prestigious college, and I'm going to become the principal of the college. And then I receive on that day, in that morning, when I'm about to sit on my chair, beautiful flowers. And these flowers uh, come from the leading industrialist. And they are in front of me, and I can't tell you how thrilled I was to be accepted by industry to, to this prestigious position. But in those flowers was a crushed note. And I pick out that crushed note, and that crushed note says, it was from a wanted column of the Times of India, which said, wanted for the job of a porter, minimum qualification, BCom. And the industrialist had written in his handwriting, are you going to be producing porters? Year 2000, millennial year, and that's when it hit me. 19th century curriculum taught by 20th century faculty to the 21st century uh, uh, students. Is that going to carry on? Fast forward 2020, and things changed dramatically, something that we were waiting for all this time. What happens? It's a perfect storm. Why? Because pandemic hit the world pandemic was just not an economic crisis or a social crisis or a health crisis. It was a major crisis for education as we all know it and as we all experienced it. But I feel it was a perfect storm for us. Why? Because education would never have embraced technology the way we did when we were hit by the pandemic. I would say the schools were hard and colleges were hardest hit, but it was interesting to see that uh, technology supposed, supported all the students through education with use of AI, advanced analytics, personalized online, uh, on-demand student support, and in varying digital formats, and even today, online education continues to do that. But at the same time, Industry was also changing. Industry 4.0 was also changing. It was becoming digital transformation, becoming now the norm, machine learning, climate change, waste management, digital security, healthcare analytics, everything and creating the jobs of the future. How often were we told, are you preparing the students for the jobs of the future? Did we really know our industry 4.0? And do we know it even today with, with, with the pace of change going in so quickly? But I think it was very important that while both were changing, a dramatic revolution was taking place. 
And where was this dramatic revolution taking place? The Gen Z. This is where the change was coming. I think, were we aware of what our students wanted to learn? Are we universities, even today, aware of what our students want to learn? And I think I experienced this the most during the pandemic. While education embraced technology, while technology became power-centered and, and uh, became digitally power-centered and people-centered, educational young students became even way ahead of us. Revolutionary change happened to them. Let me just give you very quick four examples. Here is young Shorya, a business student, uh, passionate about healthcare, and he wants to do 3D printing of prosthetics, right? What are the skills he needs? Physiology, digital technology, design and 3D printing, entrepreneurship, is the BBA course teaching it? Young Mansi, let's take care of. A textile design student. I have a lot of people from the textile design here. Passionate about augmented reality and e-commerce, creating a virtual wardrobe of skills. What skills does she need? Fashion design, consumer behavior, coding and programming, digital marketing. Young Nile, passionate about financial inclusion. What skills does he need? Behavioral science, UI, UX, fintech, data science. The other day, Somebody comes to me from a leading, leading uh, media and, and communication agency and says, can you give me a student and I will give the job now on if he is, can be a mood analyst. And I said, a mood analyst? That's it. What kind of skills does he need? Let's look at young uh, Janvi, passionate about rural education and she wants to reduce dropouts. She's a psychology student. She's a liberal arts student. And she needs now artificial intelligence. She has to develop curriculum. She has to do cloud computing. And she has to do machine learning. Right. These are just four examples. But we see them everywhere in all your colleges. But are we recognizing them? Are we seeing how quickly young India is moving? But young India is not just moving in, in the classes where you are digitally powered. But when I get municipal school children, when they come to my institution year after year, and this year especially, when I had 700 municipal school children of Mumbai, and I asked them, what is it that you would like me to teach you today? Or what would you like, what kind of, of uh, classes do you want? And everybody put up their hands for robotics, right? So I would say the demand for technology uh, skills is even cutting across all, all the strata. But in this, this is very interesting to see that young India today is, as we usually say, supposed to be, you know, they would wear those faded jeans, they would wear, and, and would they be really as responsible? Let me tell you, Gen Z are more purpose-led today. This is a statistics of 10 countries which says they are more purpose-led. They have, their pursuit in higher education is opting more for substance over style, and Gen Z in India has become more environmentally conscious. Let me tell you, when we do internships, and I have faculty sitting here, and they will vouch for this, the students come and ask me, they've got a great company to work with, and they say, hold on, what is it? We want to see what their ESG ranking is. They don't want to go in for every company that offers them a job. So they are environmentally conscious. So, 82% of the students are today telling us this is five economies done by A.G. Nielsen across the world, and it says that 82% of our students even today are telling us that 
you are not providing us the skills that the industry requires. And 84% of the industry is telling us that you are not giving us employable students. And this divide continues, and I think it's time that we, we looked at how we would bring this divide together. And what I am very happy to say over here is that while the, the students are demanding this, I'm glad the regulators, I'm glad that the entire uh, government has listened to us for once, and 34 years later, never mind what is 34 years, at least the change has come. The new education policy, the national education policy. And I definitely feel that that is a ray of hope for us today. And I think I would, I would urge all the educators here that please look at the national education policy right to the UGC. I've been five years on the UGC, and I never knew the UGC would listen to us till now when I see every letter is being answered. Please write to them. Talk to them. Tell them what your problems are. We recently had a problem. If I'm starting a design school, if I'm starting a digital technology school, where is the talent going to come from? Let me get experts from industry. And they permitted that. And I think it's time that we speak and understand that the national education policy is today going to bring in that superpower change that we all are expecting. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So we can see that Gen Z is asking us for the future of learning to be non-traditional uh, courses, career-based programs, self-education, lifelong learning, tech-driven experiences, social media engagement, mental health services, diversity and inclusion, and emotional intelligence. This is what the young people are demanding. Now, let me just tell you one particular example here. Here is, have a careful look at this board. We are very fortunate that we, during the pandemic, as I told you, it was a perfect song for personally for us too, because we ran the design school and we ran schools of management and, and film and entrepreneurship and uh, uh, many of these skill-based schools. And the government of India recognized us uh, and, and the state government of Maharashtra created us as India's first skill tech. Uh, university, state private university. And I'm happy to say that we have a very stellar board here led by uh, Mr. Deepak Parikh, and who has always been very encouraging. And if you look at now some of the other members on this board, you have um, some of the uh, absolute stalwarts, and you also have Young India here, as you can see, Anand Goenka, Ariman Billa, all of them re representing Gen Next. One question we ask them, just one question. The first question that we asked them when we met them for, for the board, and why did they first of all agree to be on our board? Because we were different. We were actually addressing the needs of Industry 4.0. And so we said, tell us, what is the one thing that you want out of our education system? just one thing. Difficult, right? Because we are here for years training and, and learning. And interesting to see the crowd. Impact. Impact, digital literacy, critical thinking, entrepreneurial mindset, empathy. I think all of them as being the strongest skills today that we have to bring in. I'm happy to say that life skills have been introduced in the national education policy. I'm happy to say that the national education policy today has focused on interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, and transdisciplinary education. We're happy to say not only our students within the classroom, not only our students at workplace, learning at the workplace, but we also have teachers 
within industry where they are learning at every stage. And I think this particular close combination is very important for India to move ahead. So, it is the NEP 2020, which, as, as we can all see, has brought in those skills that demanded, were demanded by Industry 4.0. Uh, it is developing at the same time access to all. It is developing at the same time potential and um, giving a, pro a, a, a equitable society. And we are happy to say that today we are able to reach out to even those that we could not reach out to in the earlier days. Uh, next. So what is a skill tech university? A good question. Very often we are asked this, and we said, how did we think of this? Yes, we felt we wanted to bring in and merge, A, the skills that were required for Industry 4.0, but the skills that were required for the future. And so, the three aspects of the Skill Tech University are delivery of new age multidisciplinary skills. We have so many schools across. I would want to make one appeal here. Why can't Hindu College and us work together in creating skills that we work across each other, your strengths, our strengths, and they become skills that students can pick up as part of their curriculum and as electives. Why do we have to only work with international universities? Universities within India should work together and put things together to be able to do that. Why are we not able to say that? If, if we've said, you know, they've always said that it should be make in India, study uh, skill in India, digital India. Why not study in India when we have the best of talent available in our own country? And the best of young students available, on, hungry young students available in our own country. And I would say I'd be so happy to have and, and now that you can do things online, I'd be happy to have any of your universities work with us. If I've got Professor Shamit Srivastava sitting here, who can do a brilliant job of product design, why can't I have somebody from one of the other schools get their students involved in, in doing this while my student gets on the best of liberal arts that you would be able to do? It's time we break the silos. It's time we get together, we work together. We're working very closely with schools. We are bringing in schools for boot camps. We are showing them the, school, the schools how, how interdisciplinary education can work, but it's time that we work at our own college levels. And with this, I would say, uh, of course, using <clears throat> emerging technologies and making it definitely very, very industry-related because that's what the jobs of the future are. Uh, so this is the connect between the industry and the uh, 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 national education policy. And I would finally say that no matter what and how strong is our conviction about the education we are giving, <clears throat> the education we are giving, I think you have to wait to listen to the conviction of the young people. Let me just give you one last example before I go. Um, a young lady from Kashmir brings her young child to me. 15-year-old Dhruv Lakra was sent to my college to study commerce. Is bacche ko bachalo. She comes from Kashmir. I said, Bombay me chhod rahe ho? Say, ha. I said, theek hai. I have 7,000 students in HR college. Dhruv was lost five years of undergraduate, two years junior college, three years of undergraduate. What was his ambition? I want to become a leading 
investment banker in an investment company, right? Nothing wrong with that. And so he worked very hard, gets a first class, gets into Merrill Lynch, the top leading company. One of the things that we had done in our institution was that no matter what you pass and whatever your university requires you to do, the college requires you to do one internship with a NGO, and that was a mandatory thing. Gone, and he must have done it, and he came out of it. Merrill Lynch gets the fantastic job. I said, apni maa ke saath phone laga kar do, baat karni hai, poochna hai. Theek hai, ab, have, I, have I done my duty to your son? She was very happy. Dhu was happy. Dhu went to the work, went to work. I felt happy. Three days later, Dhruv is back into my room. Ma'am, I don't want to do this job. It doesn't tug at my heart. What does? I want to work for something, someone different. What is it you want to do? What did he do? Dhruv Lakra started India's first courier company, which employs only the deaf. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to end by saying that let, let universities listen to these young people. Let us fulfill all their ambitions and all their aspirations. And I think you all are doing a wonderful job of it. But let's work together. We have a long road ahead, a lot to be done. And the world is changing very fast. We need a lot to be done. Let's work together. And as uh, our uh, Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan said, India's future will continue to be made in her classrooms. Does it matter if they are digital? Thank you. <laughs>